Hey, all you beautiful people out there. If you could please do me a favor and like, comment, and share this video, it will be greatly appreciated. And if you don't want to miss a video from me, please hit that little bell for notifications. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm your host, Austrick Vox. Now, for one reason or another, a lot of fans want to see the return of Rose Quartz and Steven Universe. They want to see Steven and Rose meet, interact, speak to each other. They long for this mother and son reunion. And well, who can blame them? Steven's been through a lot. And obviously, it's tough not having his mom around. And he's really conflicted about his mom. He doesn't know how to feel about her. He hears so many good things from Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, Greg, yet horrible things about her from Homeworld. Rose Quartz wasn't just a leader, she was a criminal. She was a threat. And to a lot of Homeworld, gems? She's scary. She shattered Pink Diamond, one of the leaders of Homeworld. And from our perspective, the Crystal Gems perspective, Homeworld is evil, but from Homeworld's perspective, they're just doing what they're supposed to do. So for someone to stroll up and essentially assassinate the president of Homeworld, or at least one of the world leaders of Homeworld, that's a terrifying thought. And while we know Rose's intentions, or at least we think we do, to protect the Earth, but I'm almost positive there's more to that story. Homeworld just sees a monster. Someone who thought that a piece of rock, the Earth, and some animals was more valuable than actual life, an important life. With no sense of clarity of the true Rose Quartz, it's understandable why Steve would be conflicted about it. I mean, he even states this in Steven Floats. Something that may never be resolved unless he has a conversation with her, but she's gone. She became Steven, and Steven has none of her memories. Now, before I continue any further, I want to say I don't want Steven and Rose to interact. I don't want them to talk. I don't want Rose to come back, or anything of that sort. Not only have so many character arcs, character development for all the main characters stem from Rose being gone, but Rose's death, and say what you want about her not being dead, but they clearly treat her as if she is, it's an allegory for dead parents, absent parents in one's life. Rose essentially died in childbirth, that's what it's supposed to represent. Greg is a single parent. All these things can't really be argued. It's one of the more blatant representations in the show. Right next to its LGBT themes, if anything. While I can't give a certain amount, there is without a doubt a portion of viewers out there who have lost their parents or like Steven, have never even known their parents or one of their parents, both of their parents, whatever the case may be. A lot of people identify with Steven Universe and all the aspects of it. That's one of the aspects that people identify with. The loss of a parent not knowing one of their parents. By having Rose come back in any way, shape, or form, having them interact, you are shattering that link that some of the viewers have with the show. You're taking that away, even if it is just for a short period of time. However, the reason why I'm making a video on this theory having my own take on this theory is because I believe there's arguments from both sides on why this could and could not work. This is not my own original idea. While it's a conclusion I came up with on my own without looking at the internet, I look at all my theories to make sure there's anything on the internet similar to them, and a lot of people have come up with the same concept. And as the majority of us know, Steven Universe is heavily influenced by anime, and something similar to this has been done in anime. Most notably, Naruto. Naruto himself is an orphan. He lost both of his parents. But, I would say towards the middle, almost the beginning of the end of the series, he is able to interact with both of his parents through the Nine-Tailed Fox Kurama that's inside him. As when they were dying, they infused some of their chakra inside of Kurama, allowing them to speak to Naruto in that moment. And then in the climax of the series, Naruto's father is reincarnated for a short amount of time. And while both those moments were heartwarming, not permanent, and very fulfilling in terms of fan service. It was just that, fan service. It took away from the emotional impact that Naruto is an orphan, that he never knew his parents. By getting to know them, it once again isolates those viewers who are orphaned, lost a parent, and part of the reason why they identify with Naruto is because of that factor alone, but Naruto got the chance to be with his parents, so it's like, okay, that's kinda ruined now. But I digress. To focus on the topic of the video, how would Steven talk to Rose? How would he find a way to communicate with Rose Quartz? And I don't mean the possibility of a homeworld Rose Quartz, even though I doubt they exist. I mean the Rose Quartz that was the leader of the Crystal Gems, rebelled against Homeworld, and shattered Pink Diamond. That Rose Quartz. The Rose Quartz that fell in love with Greg Universe, inspired so many people, and saved the planet Earth. How would Steven ever be able to communicate with that Rose? How would he ever be able to have some kind of conversation with her? The way I see it, one of the more underplayed things in the series could serve as a way for Steven to talk to his mom, and that's her room, Rose's room. We've only had a few appearances of Rose's room in the episodes Together Breakfast, Rose's Room, Open Book, and Catch and Release, from my memory. 
If I miss any other episodes, please let me know. Although I'm not really counting the two seconds it was in Steven and the Stevens. We see that once in that room, Steven can create clones of people, duplicas, replicates. When he was first in the room, he created a full-blown beat city. However, it totally glitched out. The personalities of the citizens in there were not even close to accurate, except Greg. He was actually the most accurate clone in there, having a full-out conversation with Steven. And then he glitched out too. Later in the episode, Open Book, Steven accidentally created a clone of Connie, which also acted pretty accurate until the very end, where he broke her and then she turned to like a manifestation of Steven's subconscious, forcing him to tell Connie that he actually enjoyed the ending of the book. Finally, in Catch and Release, Steven goes to Rose's room, asks to speak to Paradot, and it makes a duplicate of Paradot that just keeps repeating her last few words. This frustrates Steven and then it shows him a path to the burning room. So what we know from Rose's room, it's a reflection of the owner's memories. We assume that since Rose became Steven, the room is now in his name. Now since Steven overwritten Rose's data in the gym, and has none of her memories, it's easy to argue that Rose's room cannot produce Rose, or at least a Rose with knowledge of anything, because Steven doesn't know her, he doesn't have any memories of her. He knows what she looks and sounds like, but I highly doubt he has a grasp of her personality, and she wouldn't be able to give him any answers. If we can make any assumptions from the replica of Herodot that Steven made, she would just repeat her message to Steven that she had on the videotape. Also in the episode Rose's room, the only reason why Greg was the one with somewhat normal personality, with an accurate personality, is because Steven knows him the best. And the reason why the replica of Connie in Open Book is so much more like Connie is because Steven got to know her since then. However, my argument against this, for the sake of this theory, is that Steven lived in Beat City his entire life. He knows all the townsfolk pretty well. Connie, however, just moves around a lot, so that's why it took her so long to meet Steven. So everyone else in that town of Beach City, especially being 19 episodes in, should have had an accurate personality because Steven knew them. He knew them well by then. Even if we as an audience didn't know every single thing about them, Steven still knew more than we did at that time. Just because he had 12 years of experience with them. We've only had 19 episodes at that point, and not all of them focus on the citizens of Beat City. And we're still not exactly sure how Rose's room works. I would say it's likely that the reason it glitched was simply due to the fact Steven was trying to recreate Beat City and all of its citizens, all that sentient life. Especially for his first time in Rose's room, it burned him out. So why was Greg the most stable, accurate one in there? I like to believe that it wasn't just because of how well Steven knew him, but for how well Rose knew him. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Rose's room is an amalgam of Rose and Steven's memories, because they both have the same gem. The room is a flash drive of sorts. Not only does it have Steven's memories, but it also backed up Rose's. Steven, and by extension the viewers, just don't know it yet. Not only do I believe Steven just hasn't thought of it yet, as in crosses his mind to ask the room, hey, can you show me my mom? But he's also scared to. The topic of Rose intimidates him. It scares him. We see how shooken up he got through Stevani in Life Education. So the scenario of straight up confronting Rose, or even a replica of her, confronting a personification of her memories, may not be something he's ready to handle yet. But I do believe it's a possibility that he can use the room as a way to talk to Rose. Having a personification of Rose's memories talk to Steven would give a lot of major answers, like where did Lion come from? Why did you shatter Pink Diamond? Why did you make me to get some more insight on that? Now, if the room actually knows the difference between Rose and Steven is something that's yet to be shown. It could just assume that Rose is talking to herself. So the replica of Rose that would appear would just spit out information, thinking that she's just relaying her own messages to herself. A brief memory jog. But let's not stop there, let's take it a step further. Let's say Steven wants to know about Pink Diamond. Let's say he even asks Rose, why did you shatter Pink Diamond? How did you shatter Pink Diamond? And then he asks for the room to show him Pink Diamond. Now keep in mind, this is only if the room keeps both of Steven and Rose's memories. This is the only way any of this is possible. And the room shows Steven Pink Diamond. This is how we would be able to see Pink Diamond, hear Pink Diamond. However, that could be severely traumatizing to Steven. Why? Well, let me pick you a scenario where this would happen. Steven goes to the room, asks to see Rose, he talks to Rose, and then he asks for Pink Diamond. Since the room would have Steven and Rose's memories, Steven would cut to the gem war. He, the last thing he knows, Pink Diamond would be on the ground. Steven holding whatever Rose used to shower Pink Diamond right in front of him, and he's looking at Pink Diamond's eyes. Pink Diamond mutters her last words, and next thing you know, you just hear a shattering sound, and Steven suddenly steps out of it, the room turns back to normal, he's panicking, he's crying, he's heartbroken. Not sure if the show would actually do that, but the show has had darker moments, and I wouldn't put it past a new to a dark moment like that. And until we get flashbacks, that's probably the best way to see Pink Diamond, to get a good reference for scale for how she would be compared to Steven. 
And no matter how many flashbacks of Pink Diamond we get, we won't understand her and Rose's relationship as it comes from Rose. But her room is the second best bet. That room is important. It was introduced for a reason. Unlike Sardonyx's room, which is used just for that one episode, and while it could make a return, I don't think it will have an overall impact in the plot. But Rose's room was designed to be like that for a reason. The crew universe had it like that for a reason. It's weird that they would have something that has projections, memories, something that could very well be used as an info dump if it just never was. What relevance does it have to the plot then? Because after all, that was the room of Rose Quartz. Of course the room of one of the biggest characters in the show is going to be important. I just hope however they do utilize it again. If it is in this manner, it's done well, doesn't feel contrived, and heaven forbid if they ever do have Rose and Steven interact, even through a holographic projection, a cloud replica, that still manages to keep the impact of Rose being gone. I don't want that message taken away from the viewers who relate to it. But these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours, so please comment down below. Do you think Rose and Steven will ever meet? I'm not saying Rose coming back. I don't want Rose to come back, but do you want Rose to come back? Just anything that's on your mind, put it down below, let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Follow us on social media, links to everything in the description down below. Austrug Vox, signing out.